All new at six, a man who spent 37 years behind bars for a crime he did not commit is fighting to get compensation owed by the state. ABC Action News reporter Heather Lee has been following this story for a year and a half now. Her reporting has caught the attention of some state lawmakers. And now there's a renewed push to pass a bill aimed at helping exonerees like him get what he's owed. New tonight, our Heather Lee is following up and taking a closer look at the move for change. So this is one of the apartments. This is another one. The Sunny Center. It's one of the only places in the entire country available to people who have been wrongfully convicted. It's where Robert Dubois lives. Clemente Aguirre used to live here too. After he was released in 2018, if this place didn't exist... I would be homeless and living under the bridge or something. Both of them will tell you vindication of a wrongful conviction is all they could think about in prison, but outside, it's not enough. Once you get out of there, reality hit you, right? You didn't got no clothes, you had no ID, you got no health care, you got no mental health, you got no money. Clemente and Robert are both struggling to make ends meet. Robert's doing handyman work, finding jobs by word of mouth. But after losing 37 years of his life behind bars, he has no foundation. Even trying to rent an apartment, considering you don't have an actual pay stub, you know, you don't have an actual job as far as they're concerned because you can't show proof of income. Robert was accused, convicted, and sentenced to death for the murder of Barbara Grahams in 1983. The Innocence Project and the state attorney's office worked together to get him out once DNA proved he didn't do it. Clemente spent nearly 15 years in prison after he was sentenced to death for the murder of his two neighbors. The Innocence Project was there for him too. And he was also exonerated. Florida is one of the many states in the U.S. that has a law that says if we wrongfully convict you uh, and you get exonerated, we should pay you money equivalent to the amount of time that you are wrongfully convicted for. For Clemente, that's more than $700,000. For Robert, more than $1.8 million. But because of stipulations in the law, both will get nothing. The state gives someone 90 days to apply for compensation from the day a judge vacates the sentence. In Clemente's case, the state was attempting to retry him, making him ineligible for the money. They make it so difficult. It's so easy to put you in there, but it's so difficult for you to get any compensation or any kind of remorse for them. That timeline, I mean, it's just not practical in the way that the, the process goes. If we're going to allow the state attorney to retry, then you know, the window is is too short. The state also bars someone from getting compensation if they are convicted of a crime prior to their wrongful conviction. It's called the clean hands provision. When Robert was a teenager, he was charged with burglary and grand theft. He was sentenced to probation. If you look back and you think about all this stuff and think about the fact that I did the probation, I did the community work hours for the police athletic league, no less. And what does it matter? It's why the Innocence Project is continuing to push lawmakers to extend the application time frame from 90 days to two years and get rid of the clean hands provision. Those changes would be retroactive so Clemente and Robert could be paid. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are continuing to show their support too. On this side, you see my name, Robert Dubois. Offensive tackle Donovan Smith gave the cleats off his feet to Robert during last Sunday's game on the strap, the Senate bill number. In 2021, after seeing an article I wrote about Robert and his lack of compensation, several offensive linemen chose him to be a focus of their social justice initiative. They paid off his truck, took him to the Super Bowl, but above all, they befriended him. Listen, if they never did anything else for me, they've done enough as far as I'm concerned. You know, they're just a bunch of good guys. In 2020, the bill passed through legislative committees unanimously, but died before it could get to the House and Senate floor. It's back for the 2022 legislative session. State Representative Tracy Coster helped file it. We as a state, if, if we don't get it right the first time, then we need to make it right. Coster believes the support in Tallahassee and on the football field will be enough to finally get it passed. Heather Lee, ABC Action News. Heather, thank you. Meanwhile, for context, according to the National Registry of Exonerations, there have been 78 people exonerated in Florida since 1989. But the Innocent Project says that they've only been able to identify five people who have been compensated under the state's compensation law. So now, if this bill that Heather just told you about passes, 15 people would become eligible, including Robert and Clemente. Collectively, these 15 people spent over 236 years in prison for crimes they never committed. Of course, we'll be sure to follow the progress of that bill 
and give you updates as soon as we learn them.